My name is Mike Eve. I'm a senior engineer slash research leader at EWI. I work in our friction processes groups, which vary from solid state joining techniques to hybrid techniques such as resistance welding. So where we are right now, we are in the friction stir cell uh, made by GTC. This is one of the largest friction stir welders in the world. Uh, some of the things I'm going to show you, you do not need a machine this big. This is just what we have here at EWI. So I'm here today to talk to you guys about friction stir welding and what it is. So friction stir welding is a solid state welding process, meaning that we don't melt the material. So how do we do that? We take a third body tool, which kind of looks a little bit like, uh, almost like a modified bolt. And what we do is we slowly spin that tool and then engage it with the material. As we engage it with the material, we get frictional heating and plastic deformation. We continue to plunge in until the tool is entirely engaged with the top surface of the material. At that point, we begin to traverse or move through the material. As we're moving through the material, we're actually stirring it. So we're cutting it off one side, dragging the material around to form a joint. Now, once again, we're doing this in the solid state, but we do have the material hot enough that it essentially has no strength, so it's easy to move like Play-Doh. Once we've traversed through the entire joint, we retract, and we're left with the solid state tube, which has a surface like this. So, why would you want to use this process? So once again, because it's relatively low heat input, we can get excellent as welded properties, especially in alloys like aluminum and copper. So with aluminum as welded properties, we retain up to 80 to 100% of the joint strength depending on an alloy. With hard welding, you're lucky to get 50 to 70%. Also with friction stir, we can do up to four inches thick in a single pass in aluminum. So when comparing once again to arc welding, that's maybe anywhere from 10 to 40 beads and we can do this in a single pass. Now, we can go very thin as well. So this is a 30 thousandths uh, sheet of steel. That's about our limit in both steel and aluminum. And when we're doing this, we can achieve very high travel speeds, up to 150 inches a minute. Uh, as we get thicker, like four inches thick, we're only going one inch a minute. And typically, as the material gets thicker, we move slower, but we're processing more material. Now, everything I've shown you here is butt joints but we can do other types of joints as well. So here we have a lap joint, which is where we actually just put a top sheet and then made a friction stir weld. And this is like an enclosure, so think heat exchangers. And what's great about friction stir welding is it can join traditionally unweldable aluminum, such as 2000, 7000 series, uh, aluminum lithium, and aluminum metal matrix composites. So we can do lap welding. This is a corner joint in titanium. So titanium is nice because we get very good super plastic formability out of the friction screw loaded joint. Um, another application for lap joints is attachment of stiffeners. So here we did a lap weld to put a stiffener. So this is a great application for like dissimilar aluminum alloys or even dissimilar alloys. Uh, for example, a joint like this is used in a Honda Accord to join aluminum to steel for dissimilar welding. So, there is some art that goes into the tool design. So depending on the thickness of the material, I have very thin, somewhat thick, and you know medium thickness here in terms of friction stir tools. Uh, we at EWI here are experts in designing the friction stir tools. So there is some expertise that goes into material selection and design of the friction stir tool. Uh, the other area that EWI is a world leader in is hard metals. So we have kind of led the way in joining of steel. And there's two materials that are used for joining steel. We prefer tungsten rhenium. So this is a tungsten based tool. You can't see it, but this thing weighs a couple pounds. It's one of the densest metals in the world. And the counterintuitiveness of hard metals is that they're actually easier to stir. So you see, we really don't have threads. We just have a tapered cone. So we can do steel and titanium up to an inch thick and you know down to the same 30 thousandths. Um, and that, that's really it. So, you know, aluminum, great properties, copper, high conductivity, almost no knockdown and transmission on like electrical resistivity. So if you have more questions, please contact me. Uh, John and Rebecca or any of the member people will have my contact info and I look forward to hearing from you.